Greetings to you all. I would like to welcome you all to this exciting series of webinars on asset management practices co-hosted by the South African Institute of Electrical Engineers and Seagray Southern Africa. I am Engineer Butelezi and I am employed at Rand Water Board. I am the custodian of automation assets of the water supply infrastructure. My responsibility is to ensure that these OT assets are specified, installed, operated, maintained in the order to provide the expected level of service at minimum life cycle cost. I also fulfill voluntary roles in the Engineering Council of South Africa and the South African Institute of Electrical Engineers. And I will be your host for this evening. This is the third of our seven weekly webinars lined up every Thursday, covering a range of topics from ISO 55,000 asset management systems in general and sample artifacts. And those two topics were covered in the past two sessions. In today's session, we are going to cover the application of asset management in the industry, particularly in the electrical industries. As you'll see, our two presenters are from ESCOM. As mentioned last week, the series will then cover four common asset planning aspects catering for growth opportunities through expansion planning and managing risk through maintenance, refurbishment or renewal and operations planning. We will then wrap up our series with, operation, with, with a discussion op, on optimization portfolios in the light of capital rationing. So be sure to join us every week. It will be very exciting. <clears throat> Just a simple house rule for today. Those of our attendees that have questions, please submit your questions during the session by the question pane. I will be sure to table as many of them as possible to our presenters as they conclude. As mentioned earlier, today's presentation is titled ISO 55000 which is the implementation of asset management in the electric utility. So we will be looking at ESCOM. And our presenters are engineer Prince Moyo and engineer Debo Homokwana. I've got in front of you Prince Moyo's bio, and I will just summarize a few um, um, aspects of, of Prince's bio. Prince is a general manager at ESCOM where he has over 23 years experience. He is currently responsible for design of transmission infrastructure. His team covers transmission asset technologies from overhead line, underground cables, substations, protection and control, telecommunication, up to 765 kV networks. The transmission engineering departments also provide specialist support to project construction and engineering support. The asset health review practices that are recently implemented at ESCOM over the recent years have resulted in a much greater clarity around asset risk, leading to a reduction in failures to below record levels. I think we need to hear more from Prince. Uh, any organization that houses a lot of infrastructure to that magnitude would like to reduce some costs. Prince is the chairman of Seagray and a senior vice president at SAIEE, and he is a registered engineer with EXA and a fellow of SAIEE. I will then move on to our next speaker. Debo Homakwana is a reliability and maintenance engineering senior consultant at ESCOM Transmission. He has over 15 years experience on asset care regimes that includes development of maintenance engineering processes and standards, asset health formulation, asset performance management, as well as compliance assurance. 
He has accumulated his experience from organizations that include Spornet Infrastructure, Maintenance, ESCOM Enterprise, ESCOM Distribution, and Power Delivery Engineering within ESCOM Group Technology. He holds a Bachelor of Technology in Electrical Engineering from Tswane University of Technology, a Master's of Science in Technology Management from University of Pretoria, and an Electrical Engineering Certificate of Competency. He is a member of EXA as well, CGRE, and a, a ICMEESA. He has published and presented several articles and papers on acid care regimes. That has been a mouthful. I'm sure you um, can see the caliber of presenters that we have today. And with that said, um, I'm now going to hand over to Engineer Moyo to kick us off. Over to you, Prince. Thank you, Rafilu. I um, trust that uh, you can see my screen clearly. Um, it's good to be on the other side being a presenter today. And I'm very excited uh, together with Teboho to be sharing this secret technical bulletin called TB787. Um, you can see the topics that I'm going to cover, introducing CIGRE a little bit, um, a little bit about the work group uh, C134, and then a recap on the overview of ISO 55001. A uh, very brief overview. The job was very well done by our experts, Graham Fogel and Rhys Davis, in the first uh, webinar, and uh, again, Graham and Petras in the second one. So that's just a recap. We'll also talk about the mandatory shell statements that you find in ISO 55001 and how we recommend that you cross-check your compliance to them in this uh, technical bulletin. The bulk of the time is dedicated to item number five for Teboho, which is really the survey of the, of the utilities uh, practices. I will then wrap up uh, item number six with very uh, brief uh, case studies of three utilities um, in terms of their processes, tools, and systems. The technical bulletin uh, we are going to be covering today is structured, in fact, to cover the four topics that you, you, you see settled here, the bottom four. And um, um, like I said, I will spend very little time and Devoho will spend the bulk of the time covering item number five. Uh, this is SIGRE, the brief introduction to SIGRE. Uh, this is the highlight of SIGRE. Every two years, we congregate in Paris at what is called the Paris session. What you see here is the 2016 session with Professor Frolik uh, uh, presiding. Uh, we have an opening session and plenary where all the delegates attend before they disperse into their various subject areas. So over three and a half thousand delegates will be at this venue, and then outside at the exhibitions that cover three floors, another 5,000 um, uh, people who don't have to be delegates uh, take part there. We have over 94 countries represented and um, meetings in parallel during that week, over 160 meetings. So uh, the Paris session is a big thing for SIGRE members, and it happens every two years. Uh, of course, it's been happening since uh, the 1930s, and they liked to say, except during the Second World War, but uh, this year we'll have to add that uh, also except during 2020, because there was an outbreak of uh, a virus called COVID-19. I'll be telling my grandchildren that. Um, Sigrid has been... Uh, around since 1921, it comprises 59 national committees with 15,000 members from over 90 countries. So a national committee could be more than one country. Over a thousand organizations, uh, including obviously major utilities like ESCOM, 
And uh, the, the, the heartbeat of SIGRE is really the working groups where the work is done to solve various problems. Over 250 working groups at a time with 5,000 experts taking part, some of the world's leading experts. And SIGRE provides a, a diverse, unbiased uh, perspective uh, from, from the whole world. Some of the organizations that are part of uh, SIGRE in uh, South Africa, you can see that um, uh, members and recent members, and uh, you can see that we also have EDM and NAM Power, who are obviously from outside South Africa. SIGRE does its work through 16 working groups that are grouped into four groups. The first one, A, is discrete equipment, and then B is subsystems that, when put together, give you the power system. C is various topics of uh, system-wide view, and D are cross-cutting topics such as materials and images text techniques and information systems and telecommunications. Uh, our working group was uh, C1.34, which means we fall under uh, study committee C1. That's a unique study committee which uh, houses three of the asset planning activities that we spoke about, uh, being planning for expansion or growth, planning for maintenance and planning for refurbishment. They are all catered for under C1 and C2 you can see is then handling the the, the the operations planning aspect. And people like to say, what does SIGRE give, it, give you? I've added just one question, a typical question that um, uh, utilities and uh, operators of power systems might be interested in. It's a topical question these days. What level of renewable energy penetration should be safely allowed in the power system? and uh, the various competencies of SIGRE would be able to tackle that topic. Obviously, it takes years to provide clear guidance and uh, you would have an answer from all aspects. Working Group C-134 was launched in February 2016. We had four face-to-face -face meetings. Uh, we included uh, more than uh, well 30 members from 25 countries. Exciting thing is uh, uh, this thing of time zones when you are doing cigarette work because someone is just uh, waking up now or is in the middle of their sleep. And we had 25 conference calls and uh, we were rigidly managed by a Swiss gentleman who was our secretary. So we did some hard work there and we published our technical bulletin in 2019, all 204 pages. If you look carefully on this one, on the right hand side, you'll see Teboho, Teboho's name and my name. I won't spend much time on the ICE overview of ISO 55001. You'll get the presentations and videos of the first two webinars. And when you go through them, you will see that uh, we did justice to the topic. But essentially, ISO 55000 family of standards and 01 in particular, which has got the requirements is about asset risk and opportunity and what you do to, 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 to eliminate risk or minimize risk or uh, take advantage of opportunities. We touched on a few artifacts, which you, you can see there. I've added my own term of AMOS uh, in terms of asset management objectives because everything seems to have an AM something. And then uh, our bulletin emphasizes value alignment and uh, leadership uh, assurance. And I was happy when I was going through Graham's webinar number one, that in fact, those topics are also emphasized. And then what Riz told us is that uh, someone said after listening to all of this, so this is about how I spend my last $1,000. So. I hope that is 1,000 rands there. And essentially the question is, how would you spend your last 1,000 rands on your assets in order to derive the most value? The mandatory shell statements, uh, there is simply no time to cover them in this uh, webinar. So what we are going to do 
is to just refer you to them. If you go through the technical bulletin, they cover 30% of the, of, the, of the document. And all we did was to map each shell statement against the artifacts that you, you listened to in the last webinar. And I've stolen Rissa's image here as I hand over to Tebo, who I've stolen Rissa's image. And I'm asking uh, if you say this is uh, uh, a bit much, uh, this whole asset management uh, uh, environment and transition, are you then saying that you are too busy to improve? I'm going to hand over to Devoho to take us through item number five, which is really the survey. Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome. Continuing from where my co-speaker has left off, I am on item five of the presentation. So I am here to give you an objective perspective uh, regarding the alignment of the electric utilities to the ISO 55001 requirements. Some of you who are not in the electricity industry might wonder, uh, what do you have to do with the work of the electricity industry? Well, ISO 55000 was not compiled for the electricity industry. Uh, let me tell you that our inspiration to actually do this work uh, was ignited from areas outside the electricity industry. We were inspired by the work that has been done by the Water Services Association of Australia, and many other industries are adopting a similar approach as well in this regard. As my co-speaker has already alluded, the focus is about how do we take the ISO 55001 requirements that has been compiled generically uh, such that they suit all industries and tune them to a, a specific industry. So the scope of the survey covered the width and the breadth of the ISO 55001 requirements. On the left of the screen, from 4 to 10, are the main topics covered in the ISO 55001 standard. Then on the right are the key elements, uh, which are key features for an, for an effective uh, asset management system. We went into each of these areas of the ISO 55001 standard and we scrutinized each and every shell statement and converted them into uh, questions that we posed to utilities to verify uh, their level of compliance. The survey questions comprised of either yes or no uh, type of questions or the five point Likert scale. We used the yes, no questions where we wanted uh, uh, explicit answers without leaving any room for confusion. An example of that can be you either have a documented asset management policy or you don't. The five point Likert scale was used to test the strength of the adequacy or effectiveness of the requirements. And an example of that can be uh, to what degree does the asset management policy of your organization uh, is consistent with the other relevant organizational policies. So such a question is not absolute and the convenience of a naked scale uh, allows for partial compliance. To analyze the results, we chose to keep it simple and we used a percentage measure for the yes or no type of questions. And then for the Likert scale, we used the mean to identify the middle ground or the skewness of the responses. While the standard deviation gave us the level of compliance or the level of agreement or disagreement in terms of the responses uh, that we have received. So when it comes to surveys, response rate matters because with a survey, you are able to paint a bigger picture of what is out there without having to reach, to reach each and every electric utility. 
a rule of thumb is that a third of responses is normally considered to be an average uh, response rate. In our case, we were able to invite 122 electric utilities from around the world, and we were able to remarkably achieve a 48% response rate. 59 companies were able to give us a response uh, in this regard. I need to acknowledge that there were a few things that worked in our favor, and of course, a few others that worked against us. The pluses were that we had a big working group of about uh, 31 members who were able to identify not only utilities, but also personnel in those companies that are engaged in asset management in one way or the other. Uh, this was of great help because we all know that uh, surveys distributed from unknown senders uh, or sources, they tend to receive a cold shoulder. Our other plus was that an interest in asset management within utilities is generally high. So this became an inherent additional motivation to get this survey completed as well. Our major drawback was that the actual size of the survey, uh, the survey had almost a hundred questions, but this was intentionally so because we wanted to cover all areas and requirements of the ISO 5055. 2001 standard. Utilities of various forms and sizes uh, participated in the survey and an assurance for anonymity was provided uh, so that uh, their information is not just uh, publicized without their consent. So if we take a look at the distribution of the survey respondents, uh, that is the picture on the right. We can see that the majority of the respondents were from Europe and uh, North America, while Africa and Asia shown the least responses. So this does not in any way indicate that Africa and Asia are not interested in asset management. This we know uh, that it, it indicates that the majority of utilities that were invited uh, in the work group uh, by the work group members were from Europe and uh, North America. And we also know that Europe has the highest participation uh, in, in SIGRE. Then moving over to the survey results. Uh, if we look at the results, the first survey results relate to a question uh, that we have posed to check if utilities were ISO 55,001 certified. Uh, the picture itself, it looks similar to pushing a rock up a hill because we found only two utilities were certified out of the 59. The ISO 55,001 standard was published in 2014. Uh, this has once again proved wrong. The proverb that says moving slowly gets you there faster. But again, I guess motion is relative. I need to mention that there were some promising utilities. Uh, in fact, 16 utilities said that they had plans in place to attain certification in the next uh, two years. A large proportion of companies had the intention of compliance only, while a considerable number of utilities had no plans whatsoever uh, with regard to either ISO certification or ISO uh, compliance. The first area of the ISO 55001 standard is that of understanding the context of the organization. Uh, this element comes hierarchically first because uh, asset management is there to serve the aspirations of the organization. In the survey, we have asked questions that relate to understanding the, um, the organization and its context. We have asked if the utility had organizational plans. Uh, these are mostly referred to as corporate strategic plans in many organizations. We posed questions relating to the consideration of uh, external and internal context factors. Uh, these are things such as a uh, consideration to uh, social, economic uh, stakeholders, and if there are uh, any other factors that might impact on their uh, objectives. 
We then moved over to scoping the asset management system and we inquired about the asset portfolios and boundaries and uh, we checked if those were clearly defined. With regard to the asset management system, we inquired if utilities had an asset management system in place, the strategic asset management plans, and the asset management objectives. The overall, the overall survey results uh, for this area of, of the context of the organization. Uh, this area indicated an overall compliance of 3.23, uh, which means the majority of utilities, to some extent, uh, meet this requirement. The standard deviation of greater than one uh, tells us that there is a varying level of compliance on this requirement. If we zoom into the results, we found that the most compliant requirement was that uh, all utilities had a corporate uh, strategic plan. The least compliant requirement was that very few utilities had a documented strategic asset management plan. Again, if we take a comparison between the corporate strategy policy and the asset management system, we see that the development of the asset management system is the least, uh, sitting at 79%. So the message here is that utilities need to focus more on developing and documenting their, their sample. Then the element of leadership, uh, asset management applies a top-down approach, uh, meaning leadership is expected to lead uh, from the front. We have asked questions that relate to leadership, the asset management policy, as well as the roles and responsibilities. On leadership, ISO 55001 expect top management to show their commitment uh, to asset management by providing the necessary resources and uh, communication. The asset management policy is, is expected to be uh, aligned to the organizational objectives as well as uh, being signed by the top management. So in our previous webinar, we have seen that uh, this concise document called a policy, it, it actually provides the intentions and the direction of the, of the asset management within the organization. So it makes absolute sense that uh, this document has to be signed by the top management. Then with regard to roles and responsibilities, the org structure needs to demonstrate uh, consideration to the asset management function, the roles, and the responsibilities have to be clearly defined uh, as well. The survey results for the area of leadership indicated an overall compliance of 3.38. This is slightly higher than that of the context of the organization. Again, here we can see that there is varying level of compliance, uh, meaning some utilities are doing much better than others. The most compliant uh, requirement here was that top management ensured that resources for asset management were available. The least compliant requirement is that the asset management policy was not consistent uh, with the other organizational policies. Taking a look at the right, uh, with regard to assignment of roles and responsibilities, 75% of utilities indicated that they have assigned uh, asset management roles and responsibilities uh, in this regard. Then the area of planning is concerned with the identification of activities necessary to achieve the desired goals uh, of the organization. So these activities fall at various levels of the organization. Uh, they can be identified at the strategic level, the tactical level, as well as the operational level. We have asked questions uh, to see if the utilities had processes and plans in place for addressing risks and opportunities, 
On the asset management objectives, we have posed questions to assess whether the asset management objectives were derived from the organizational objectives. We pose questions to check if asset management objectives were specific, uh, measurable, attainable, and that they were relevant to asset management as well as uh, time bound. On planning to achieve the asset management objectives, we inquired about the methods and processes for asset management planning and the various plans that they produce, uh, such as the management plans, operational plans, and uh, CAPEX, and if there are also uh, other plans that they might be producing. We have inquired about that as well. Then our results for planning uh, is that the overall compliance for planning is 3.15. And uh, this again means to some extent the utilities are fulfilling their planning function. The most compliant requirement here was that uh, utilities have documented their asset management objectives while the least compliant requirement here was that the asset management risks were not integrated with other uh, organizational risks. Then with regard to asset management objectives and plans, the alignment of the asset management plans for the, to the strategic the uh, asset management plans appeared to be a challenge here. As we can see that uh, they are sitting at uh, 56%. The consistency between the management objectives and the organizational objectives is looking good uh, at 80%. The element of support is an enabler. So this is an enabler to uh, asset management. So. Support is like wheels on a car. Uh, without wheels, traction just becomes impossible. For the survey, we have asked questions that speaks to top management providing the necessary resources to do asset management. We have looked at uh, training plans and training activities to build and sustain com competence. And the level of staff awareness about the asset management was also assessed. For communication, we have looked at communication plans and their effectiveness. The question on information requirements uh, covered in information requirements on assets, uh, the asset management system, the uh, information attributes, quality related uh, matters, and also how such information gets collected. And lastly, under this area, we inquired whether utilities were documenting their information and also uh, the issue of access control and aspects of change control with regard to documented information. On the aspect of support, the utilities are slightly in the red as indicated by a mean uh, of overall compliance of 2.99. The most compliant requirement here was that utility staff is competent. So this is what uh, we, we saw from the results. And uh, we can also see that uh, the mean was sitting at 3.43, uh, which is good. However, the standard deviation uh, indicate that there is a considerable number of utilities that are having a challenge with regard to staff competency. The least compliant requirement here is that uh, asset management is not well communicated uh, to all parties in the organization. As you can see there that the mean is sitting at 2.63. Asset management uh, awareness needs to be improved uh, in this area of support. Then with regard to operations, operations is really where the rubber hit the road. Uh, this is where both the strategic and technical plans are being realized. And it starts with the operational planning and control. We have asked questions to assess uh, whether organizations had processes in place to govern the execution of asset management plans. 
On the management of change, we have looked at whether utilities had uh, change management processes and how they identify risks associated with change and also risk mitigations. On resourcing, we were interested in finding out whether the utilities had control on outsourced activities. Our results relating to operations uh, indicated overall compliance of 3.19, uh, which means the majority of utilities, to some extent, uh, meet this requirement. The most compliant requirement was that utilities does a review of their outsourced activities. Uh, while the least compliant requirement was that uh, utilities are lacking when it comes to change management processes. The outsourced activities for the utilities are sitting at 86%, which indicates that they are outsourcing activities that could impact on their asset management objectives. This really justifies a need to have the outsourced activities be well managed uh, so that the attainment of the asset management objectives objectives are not uh, exposed to undue risk. Moving over to uh, performance evaluation. So performance evaluation is really an appraisal and uh, it's not only of assets but of the entire asset management system. What we were interested in here uh, firstly was to get an understanding of whether utilities have defined uh, what needs to be monitored and how it will be monitored as well. We asked questions relating to internal audits, uh, if they were being done, and also whether they were being done systematically. Then we also looked at the management reviews. We, we, we checked whether the management reviews were being conducted on the asset management system and also whether they were being done consistently there as well. On the aspect of performance evaluation, uh, the overall compliance is sitting at 2.83. Uh, which puts this area really in the red. And the most compliant requirement here was that the records of asset performance, uh, these records were in place, that is what we found. Then the least compliant requirement here was that the, uh, the management reviews were not being uh, done uh, to improve the asset management system. Uh, so that is the overall message with regard to the management reviews uh, because the mean of 2.5, 2.49 indicates that uh, the, the, the utilities are really lacking uh, in this regard. Then if we move over to uh, improvement, so the continuous improvement is the cornerstone of any effective management system. So this is an ongoing effort to advance asset management in the organization and the only time it stops is when the utility ceases to operate. Under this element we have asked questions uh, that speaks to how non conformances are being identified and also how they are being dealt with. And uh, we, we also looked at how reoccurrence uh, of non conformances is being prevented in the organizations. We have asked about proactive actions that utilities are taking to identify uh, potential failures in asset performance. We inquired whether utilities were continuously improving their suitability uh, adequacy and effectiveness of their asset management system. The result in this area, the result in the area of, of uh, improvement, they are actually looking very good here, uh, which means utilities are meeting most of the requirements 
uh, in the area of improvement. The most compliant requirement in this area was that uh, utilities are doing very well when it comes to dealing with uh, non conformances the least compliant the least compliant uh, requirement here was that of record keeping so utilities are not doing well when it comes to keeping records of non conformances even though this is the least uh, however the, the 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 majority gave a score and uh, overall we can see that the score is still sitting at 3.22 and uh, however that uh, standard deviation is showing that some are actually uh, not doing good as compared to others so if we make a comparison of all the areas of iso 55001 standard uh, we see that the area of improvement indicated the most uh, compliance utilities are doing well when it comes to uh, dealing or fulfilling the requirements within the area of improvement. Uh, Non-conformances and continuous improvement are the ones that really, I think, uh, assisted in ensuring that uh, the scope for improvement really comes right on top. And then on the element of leadership, the element of leadership came second, and this really illustrates the right intentions of top management in terms of assisting and supporting to ensure that the asset management really takes shape in the organizations. Then the performance evaluation, we can see that it came last. As things like management reviews on the asset management system were not consistently uh, being done. The area of support was also found to be in the red, and one of the issues there was that the asset management is not being well communicated uh, throughout the organization. In summary, the overall result of the survey of electric utilities uh, indicated that there is a high interest in asset management development and uh, this is confirmed by the 48 percent response rate there is a room for improvement in the asset management deployment because uh, the sum of all areas uh, of the iso 55001 standard it, it gave an average score of 3.16 which means to some extent the utilities meets uh, these requirements a significant variation in the level of asset man management de development uh, was observed so there, there is varying uh, level of, of, of uh, implementing the, the standard now that we have looked at the survey results a question could be uh, so what the electricity industry is definitely not innocent uh, when it comes to asset management the level of awareness is great and the industry has made a good progress uh, in the competency phase optimizing could be the next step uh, to many utilities as they start fulfilling all the requirements and even getting certification Excellence will be when utilities have moved beyond doing the bare minimum and start applying leading best approaches. And the whole idea behind doing an assessment is to uh, understand where you are and uh, what are the next steps. So I would like to compare you with a challenge. I would like to challenge you to take a step to assess the maturity of asset management in your organizations. Uh, do a gap assessment, use your gap assessment result to navigate your progression towards uh, excellence. Thank you. And uh, I am now going to hand over to my co-speaker to continue with the presentation.
Teboko, thank you very much. Uh, I think you've covered the topic very well in terms of the survey and the results that we saw. Uh, a lot of uh, utilities around the world that participated. And uh, of course, we always would like the African participation to be better. But uh, we had one metro that took up the challenge and uh, participated. And they also got the detailed report with the results. And we are grateful for that. ESCOM, of course, participated as well. And I like the takeaway message that says, we are largely compliant, but in our one to five model of positioning progress, we think we are not yet at F4. And F4 is a type of uh, situation where your compliance has been confirmed by a certification body. So we are not yet there. In our one to five continuum, we are probably at a three, which in our own words is largely compliant, but is not yet uh, certified. When we reach that, there is still movement towards a five that is expected. So it's continuous improvement, it's maturing of the systems, and it's implementing cutting edge innovative approaches that even others can learn from so i'm going to cover the last bit of our of our webinar today which is to present to you a very brief summary of the case studies that were done on three utilities uh, our focus was to ask them to tell us their view of where they are with respect to data processes, tools, and systems as they understand the asset management system to require. Uh, we had three utilities participating, ESCOM, Tenet, and Manitoba Hydro. Uh, Tenet is uh, uh, Northern Europe, Holland, and uh, maybe some businesses outside uh, the Netherlands, the Netherlands, and uh, Manitoba Hydro in Canada. Uh, this part covers about 30 pages of the 204 pages of the of the of the technical bulletin. Um, um, so on average, about 10 pages per company. And of these three companies, only Tenet was certified to ISO 55001 in 2018. Uh, so it was really hard to get certified companies uh, when we were doing uh, this work. And the observations that are made in the technical bulletin, uh, we took uh, care not to mention names of solution vendors in line with cigarette policy. We don't advertise any entities which are for profit, but uh, we certainly identified what our colleagues are using in their various countries. The observation in summary is that all utilities have a mass of data that is used to manage assets. A mass of data, some metadata which relates to the assets themselves that goes into the CMMSs, the computerized maintenance management systems, or the financial asset registers, but also some operational information that relates to loading. Uh, that relates to asset condition and so on. And we notice that all utilities apply business process mapping. And uh, moreover, they use information management systems, uh, which are either developed in-house or sourced commercially off the shelf. You can't avoid customization. The anchor business models we found are those of asset owner, asset manager, asset uh, service provider, which Tenet uses, and those that are familiar with the uh, previous versions of asset management will know the three settle model. Uh, but ESCOM and Manitoba actually use the asset life cycle model. So there are people who look after the front end, which could be planning. Then there is a different group doing design 
then there's a different group doing construction, operating and maintenance, and, and so on. We use the, a common model in order to identify the practices, uh, regardless of which business model was being used, which basically says uh, your asset life cycle starts from planning, uh, selection of your options, design, construction, commissioning, operating and maintenance, and the needs obviously that kick in all the planning uh, coming from external. And also, as assets reach end of life during operate and maintain, you close the loop again with new needs that go into that portfolio for prioritization. So I'm bringing back this picture here that says, yes, sometimes these things sound like a lot of work to do, but remember you are actually not being asked to aim for certification. Sometimes conformance and compliance gives you a whole lot of benefits without bringing an outsider to certify you. So this graphic by Rhys Davis is very interesting and I, I really, really like it. I had a conversation today with one of my colleagues uh, who are saying we are probably too busy to be doing some of these things and uh, I found it very relevant. Are you too busy to improve? Uh, in closing, I just like to quote uh, our chairperson and convener of the working group C134 who asked uh, uh, some questions and formulated some answers for people that were engaging with us and in his view, which he expresses in the introduction to the technical bulletin, is that since every utility has its own starting point, culture, regulatory constraints and strategic objectives, it is virtually impossible to develop a one-size-fits-all solution to developing ISO 55001. So our journeys are different, our departure points are different but hopefully our destinations uh, uh, will converge. So thank you very much, uh, colleagues. That is what uh, Deboho and I had to, to offer, and we will um, take you back to your moderator. Thank you very much, uh, Engineer Moyo and Engineer Mokwana. Um, wow, I have a lot of questions on my side um, from our colleagues, and I will then pose a few questions to the two presenters. I think the questions are, are, are really po posed to the both of you. You will then decide who will answer which question. Um, and should we not then be able to answer all questions, please send us the questions and we will make sure that we reply um, by writing. Okay, so I'll start with the first question. The first question, Prince and Debo Ho, talks about ESCOM. Um, it is from one of the people that have been attending this webinar. I see his name is very familiar, Pascal Mutsuasili. Is ESCOM ISO 55000 certified um, or are you still on a journey uh, of getting certification? And if you are, what maturity level are you on? Over to you, gentlemen. So I'll take that, uh, Refil uh, Prince here. The short answer is no, we are not ISO 55000 certified none of our line businesses, not generation, not transmission, not distribution. And I might add that there has not been a, an express intention to, to either uh, comply or certify. So it's a lot of good work that happens in ESCOM and I think we are almost there really, but uh, I cannot claim that there is a there is no certification to start with, and I cannot claim that there has been expressed a clear intention to be certified. 
Okay, thank you very much. This this answer you've given us now, Prince, uh, is aligned with the question that was raised by Mulungi Sisibia, who then asked that with COVID-19 um, expected to have adverse financial impact on utilities, um, in particular considering the South African economic situation and the cost associated with full certification, would the panel recommend for South African Institute to to still push for ISO 55000 certification, or should we be content with alignment or compliance in alignment with the, compli the compliance and certification levels? So I think you, you've touched a little bit on it, but would you like to then expand a little bit more to what's Mlungis' question? Yes, uh, Rafael, my advice, if you ask me, we are all facing diminished resources and as we go on with these webinars, we are going to wrap up with the last one that talks about optimization of portfolios. So you always have needs, you always have choices to make with the resources that you have. And in my humble view, if you have a, an asset management system, be it certified or not, that is credible and has got continuous improvement, your choices of deploying your assets your resources to your assets are made much, much easier because you have identified your critical assets, you have uh, systematically de de developed care practices, and if you need to cut down on those, you do so consciously. And more importantly, you are able to revert back to the normal way of caring for your assets when your resources allow. So to me, it's very important to have asset management, uh, whether you have uh, you are cash flush or in fact you are in dire straits like we are with COVID-19. Thank you. I couldn't agree with you more. I, I, I think there's, there's one thing to be accredited and there's another to be too busy to improve as that picture that you happen to tell us four times maybe that you've stolen it from someone else. Um, we need to content, constantly improve on our asset management um, and understanding our assets. There is a comment here from Momolezi Kalipa. Great presentation, gentlemen. Quite informative and much appreciated. Thank you. Okay, and then I'll go to a question posed by Manda, and this question is similar to a question that was posed by Leslie Naidu. What has been the role of new technology on implementation of ISO 55000? Has there been a use of 4IR technology such as Internet of Things or artificial intelligence? Deboko, you can tackle that if you if you are comfortable. If you want me, I can tackle it. Let me, let me give it a shot. Uh, Tebako seems to be struggling. So um, the good thing about asset management systems is that they are not going to tell you, um, you see, the asset management system itself is a skeleton that uh, if you comply to, you can then apply a range of practices which uh, vary from the very basic to the most cutting edge. I'll give a plain example of maintenance strategies. You can very well have an asset management system which is compliant and is certified with a strategy of maybe some assets run to failure and others time-based maintenance. But know that an, a, a, a maintenance expert could come to you and say, this is not good enough. You need to migrate to condition-based maintenance you need to migrate to predictive maintenance. And in fact, these new approaches of predictive are utilizing data analytics and neural networks and self-learning and all of that, and a lot of the 4IR. So it's your choice in terms of the continuum that you select in terms of how advanced you are, as long as you can defend your choice. 
but um, uh, the ISO 55000 will not force you to adopt a cutting edge technology, not at all. Oh, thank you. Yes, if I may add as well. Uh, sorry, I was uh, being muted. So what I can add is that uh, technology is an enabler. So as you are doing your asset management, you'll identify that uh, you get to some limitations as you progress. And with the help of technology, you can actually do certain things much more efficiently. So that is what uh, I can add to what Engineer Moyo has already said. Okay, thank you very much, Debucho. And there's a question here regarding um, utilities that have adopted and implemented asset management systems. Do you have any information on the quantified benefits in terms of cost savings or capital savings of adopting the asset management systems? This question is from Leslie, Ho Leslie Naidu. Yes, Leslie. I know that Leslie missed one of the webinars before but I'm going to refer him to the slides and the recording of the webinar that uh, Graham uh, presented. And he actually quoted some percentages around different types of, uh, um, of, of improvement that are claimed by utilities that have adopted asset management practices. So please review the slides from the first webinar in the second webinar, and you will find a slide under Graham's presentation that quantifies operational improvement, efficiencies of deployment of CAPEX and all of that. I do not know the credibility or the independence of the information, but certainly some studies uh, have been done. Okay. The, the questions keep coming thick and fast, but because of time, I'll just address one more question from Matibela Silibe. What is the cause of non-compliance in asset management? All right. you want to give it a, a go? Yes, uh, I'll get on to this one. Yes, I hope you can hear me. Yes. So the cost of uh, non-compliance to asset management uh, I think let's look at it in terms of what is asset management trying to really do. So the role of asset management is actually there to uh, make sure that the organization is able to achieve its objectives by making sure that the assets can perform uh, optimally and uh, also if there are any other objectives that relates to asset management, uh, the asset management system can help in terms of ensuring that all these requirements are aligned uh, towards attaining the bigger objective, which is the overall uh, organizational objective. So in summary, really, it's, it's all about the, the things that asset management has to do in trying to support uh, the overall uh, organizational objective, uh, to put it in summary. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dempo. Um, One last question. Is there a process or procedure that is recommended to improve adoption of ISO 55000 if it's still in infancy stage? This question is from Zonk Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I, I don't know about a process and so on, but let me put it this way. So, the ways of capacitating uh, entities to comply are maybe a trade secret amongst those companies that consult uh, 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 to help you to comply. Of course, a certifier is a separate body that comes and checks your system. But as we saw, for instance, last week during the second webinar, Petras was showing us a very good trick of developing your AMPs in the format of those folders that he showed us. And uh, obviously that's their maybe trade secret as a firm that consults to companies that want to be certified. So there are many trade secrets and many uh, tools that uh, consulting firms will show you that help you to move faster towards compliance. Uh, obviously they, they, I doubt that they would be very public 
because uh, then we would not be paying for these services. But certainly with experience over the years, a lot of consultants have developed much more efficient and structured approaches of getting you to the destination in the quickest possible time. Okay, thank you very much. Colleagues, as I mentioned earlier, we will reply to the remainder of the questions in writing. I thank you all for the questions. I would like to thank our presenters for their preparation and delivery for the content that they've delivered today. We are definitely a little wiser. And to everybody that has taken their time to connect and listen, thank you very much. We would like to extend an invitation for you to join us next week as we present our fourth series. And it will be presented by Debo Homokwana on maintenance strategies. Debo Ho will unpack the application of techniques such as your failure mode and effect criticality analysis and reliability centered assessments in determining inspections, test plans, and continuous improvement, as well as the evolution of RCM and TBM and migration of preventative maintenance. Until then, I would like to thank you all for attending and goodbye. <laughs>